The communication protocol test harness also has the ability to perform conformance tests. This video is going to demonstrate the optional DNP3 conformance test module. To start the module, we load the DNP3 slave tests, which brings up a test script window. From here, we can edit the configuration. And the configuration window has a set of tabs, starting with general setup, one for connection, and then a tab for each of the data types that are tested in the test procedure. On the connection tab, I'm going to select simulated slave in the test harness. In this configuration, the conformance test will be run against a simulated slave that runs in the test harness. For testing your real device, you would actually want to connect to a device through a serial port, TCP IP, or UDP only. If we look on the input tabs, there's an option to use an Omicron, CMC 156, 256, or 356 to generate the test values. This option can really aid with automated testing, as the test harness will send commands to the Omicron to set up test conditions and then read the values and see if it got the expected results. If you don't have an Omicron to generate test conditions, the test harness allows you to use a custom tickle command to create a test condition, or to use DNP3 virtual terminal messages, or it will pop up a dialog box and instruct you what inputs to set up. Throughout the configuration window, the test harness uses pop-up help to describe each of the fields that you may need to configure. Once we're configured, we can save the configuration, and then next time we run the test, we can load that configuration so we don't have to reconfigure it each time. Across the bottom, we have a series of buttons. The first allows us to connect to the device under test, and this one allows us to interrogate the device. And the purpose of this is just to confirm that we do indeed have our communications working. So on the left side, we have a list of tests, and on the right side, we'll see the current state of execution as the test is run. We can select the test based on a prescribed set defined in the standard, for example, select level 1 or select level 2, or we can select individual tests. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to select a few of the class data tests. I'll just do class 0 and class 1, and then we can click Execute, and the test will begin. Notice on the left side we see the current progress. We also see a check mark indicating when the test has been completed, and it's color-coded, green indicating the test passed, red would indicate the test failed. And on the right side we see the current state of each of the tests, the step that needs to be provided, and what's happening in that test. All of this is also logged in the communication protocol test harness protocol analyzer log. So at the conclusion of your test, you can save out this log, and then you can review it to make sure you understand the test results, and you can submit it to the DNP3 users group for verification of your conformance. So now the tests I've run have completed, and I got this orange warning reminding me that I'm running against the simulated slave in the test harness. Of course, if you're testing a real device, you would not see this warning. And I get a final notice telling me that all tests are complete and the number of tests that I ran, the number that passed, the number that received warnings, and the number that failed. As you can imagine, this module greatly simplifies the task of conformance testing your device by allowing you to automate major portions of the testing and giving you an indication of whether the task was successfully completed.